Hi, my name is Steve Elias, and uh, I'm from uh, Englewood Health Network. I'm the director of the Center for Vein Disease. I'm going to talk to you today about the initial U.S. high fruit trial utilizing a device called Sonovane to treat uh, varicose veins. So what is the problem that we're treating? These are varicose veins uh, that you can see on the surface of the patient's skin. Uh, many people complain of heaviness, throbbing, aching as the day goes on. Most of the time though, the varicose veins that we see on the surface are really being caused by veins that are a little bit deeper underneath the skin. And that's the vein that we're treating. Remember the job of the veins is to bring the blood up the leg back towards the heart. And many times patients with varicose veins, instead of the blood going up when they stand up, it pools down in the lower leg. And there's a vein that starts all the way down at the ankle and goes all the way up to the groin that is called the great saphenous vein. And most of the time, that vein is the source of the problem that we see on the surface in the patient's symptoms. And that's the vein that we're treating with Sonovane and also with the traditional methods. So what are the, some of the current options that we have? We've been doing the, these options for 22 years. It's a catheter-based option, so obviously involves a needle stick. We place a catheter inside the vein and use some form of energy, whether it's heat energy or it's mechanical energy or it is glue placed inside the vein to take the vein that is leaking and large and shrink it and seal it shut so it doesn't leak anymore, taking pressure off of the visible varicose veins. So I said it requires multiple needle sticks. Some patients need sedation. It needs to be done with a sterile field. They do work and they work quite well and they do improve patient's quality of life. And the Sonovane device does the same thing, but um, without all of the issues uh, above. So basically for the Sonovane device using HIFU, it's done in an exam room setting. There's transcutaneous delivery of energy, no needle sticks, you don't need a sterile field, no sedation. Results thus far seem to be just the same as they are with our traditional uh, methods. And it's the only vein technology really that is completely non-invasive. So this was an initiated, uh, investigator initiated trial uh, done for the FDA to get uh, uh, approval. It was done at my hospital, it was a single site study. 20 great saphenous veins were done. Remember that's the underlying source of the patient's symptoms and visible veins. The primary endpoint was safety and efficacy. And the secondary endpoint was closure, sealing of the vein. And there's one week and three month uh, follow-up. And uh, as of uh, the recording, this, this recording, we followed up 15 patients for uh, three months uh, and we're still following up the last uh, five veins uh, as this uh, recording is being done. So uh, some statistics, there were 10 females, eight males, um, 20 veins were treated. One female had uh, two veins treated in both legs, the same with the male. That's why there's 18 patients. Most of the veins are on the left side. Um, you see here what we call seep is where, how bad is their disease? Most were C2, which is visible varicose veins. Uh, the others have patients who have veins and skin changes, darkening the skin, or one patient had an ulcer down by their ankle. The VCSS, that's how we measure uh, the score of a patient. So we can say, here's where they started. And then we ask them later on, um, did it improve? And uh, they all did improve in terms of the VCSS from pre-treatment to post-treatment. Um, diameter averaged about 6.8 uh, millimeters of all of the 20 uh, uh, patients that we did is about seven and a half for the 15 that we have had uh, full results on. A normal size saphenous vein for reference is about two and a half to four millimeters at best. So the bigger the vein, the more the blood is going in the wrong direction. And their pain on a daily basis before having treatment was about a 47 out of 100. This is the uh, Sonovane unit itself. Um, is a touch screen that you control things with, but the working unit is down uh, here and we'll show you that a little closer up. So this unit has a regular ultrasound probe and a seven and a half megahertz probe to visualize the vein, the target tissue you wanna uh, treat. And then there's the HIFU transducer, which is um, gives a concentric uh, energy that focuses a cone of energy and heats up the tissue to about 85 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, here you can see 
target the lesion, and here's some uh, thickening right after targeting, so you know you've really kind of destroyed it. Uh, there's the touch screen that we see here. Um, here we are focused onto this vein right here, and patient feels a pulse of energy, and then you can toggle back and forth. You can see before and after, so you've really kind of done your, your job. And what we do is we work our way down the leg uh, with the uh, ultrasound probe. Here's a video showing, showing this. Uh, patient is being uh, prepared. We're marking the target vein, which is right here. We have our uh, aiming markers. Is the cooling uh, coils that are coming in and out, the tubing to keep the patient cool. And then uh, once we're positioned, we fire away. This is, uh, as I said, there's the cooling unit on the outside uh, that's gonna keep the skin cool so they don't have any uh, skin burning. And then there's the um, IFU unit that's going to deliver the energy to a point. Here's the vein we're aiming at. And that's done by, um, once we target the vein, we keep moving, moving along. The unit moves automatically. This is the ultrasound probes used to visualize the target vessel. And then we tell uh, the machine where it needs to fire. And here, as you can see, we, we're starting here. We're going to work along the vein first the segment we're treating longitudinally. Then we move down to the next segment, uh, which is a three millimeters down. We then treat that segment, its entire length, and we just keep working our way uh, down. So what is uh, some of the results? The pretreatment size of the ones at 15 is about seven and a half uh, millimeters. Remember, normal size is two and a half to four. That vein was immediately post-treatment was shrunk down at three to five days to uh, 3.2 millimeters. There was reflux obviously in all the veins before we treated them. That's what we're trying to get rid of. 13 had no reflux and no flow. Uh, one patient had no reflux, but flow, the vein size went from 8.4 to four. And the only failures you might think is the uh, patient who has still has reflux and flow, even though the vein shrunk uh, quite significantly. And I should say, once there was no flow at the uh, three months interval, there still was no flow. So once it's sealed shut in your first three to five days, it has stayed still showed at least in the 14 to 15 that we did. Pain during the procedure was about 19 out of 100 and immediately post-procedure when it was stopped, it was about two. Uh, so results, no anesthesia has been given. There was no nerve or skin injury. Patients did not have any uh, DVT, that's a blood clot. There was no compression post-procedure. We didn't ask them to wear a support stocking. 13 of the 15 are closed and have remained closed at three months. And 14 of those 15 are uh, reflux free. Post-procedure, we can document that the vein is sealed shut. Here, where this is a round circle, is the vein itself. We're compressing the vein, but you can see it cannot be compressed. We're putting pressure from the skin level. That means the vein is sealed shut. And on the uh, right panel over here, this is flow in the deep vein, the main vein. The vein we treated connects to the main vein in, up in the groin. And you can see here, there's no flow uh, using color uh, Doppler. Uh, Post-procedure, we can show you significant narrowing. This vein measures only 1.2 millimeters, uh, and obviously there's no flow within it. So final thoughts. Um, it is really the only totally non-invasive um, vein treatment method currently available, but we do need to identify the right patient. Vein size probably should not be greater than 10 millimeters, and most veins we see are not. Uh, the vein depth has to be between 10 and 20 millimeters below the skin when you compress the vein uh, with the ultrasound probe. It can't be too close to the skin, or too far away. There is definitely discomfort when the patient uh, is being uh, treated as the unit uh, fires. I think there's a learning curve to understand exactly what you're seeing and where to aim your energy. Treatment time is a little longer. It's almost twice the amount of time that it takes now. Uh, to treat a vein, but when you add on the uh, prep time to start keep the, get the patient sterile and everything else, it's maybe even it's certainly less than than twice the amount. Um, 
these are, we've treated the great saphenous vein. There are other veins in the leg that uh, down the road, I do believe we will be able to treat. So what's next after this trial and the all the three month data is submitted to the FDA, hopefully they will approve it for a multi-center US trial. I do think we can improve the technique and technology to make it a faster procedure for the patient and fine tuning some of the indications. It is here to stay. I don't think it's it's something that's going to come and, and go. So words to live by, respect the elders, embrace the new, encourage the improbable and impractical and do it without bias. And that's uh, what I think we need to do when we uh, treat any disease state. So always think young, think new because that's the way medicine advances. And I just wanna thank you all for uh, listening.